Hey y'all, I'm Sarah. This is Thrills and Kills Booktube and welcome to my channel where we talk about everything dark and spooky. So today we're talking about snowy isolated thrillers. There are three books I'm going to read and funny enough, um, I will be in Mexico for a week while I am reading some of the sitting my butt on the beach staring at the Caribbean ocean. So I thought it would be kind of funny to be reading books that take place in the middle of a snowstorm in the Alps while I am sitting on the beach with my cocktail <laughs> and in my bathing suit. So let me talk about the three books that I'm going to be doing for this reading vlog. So the first one is One by One by Ruth Ware. I really enjoy Ruth Ware's books. I think she's a phenomenal thriller author. Um, she's got like a book that comes out almost every year. But what I think Ruth does particularly well is in her thrillers she is able to develop many characters and she tends to have like a whole cast of people and I feel like she does a very good job at keeping them straight, their different personalities, their motivations, like their manner of speaking. A lot of authors they have trouble creating individual characters that are distinct from each other and while they may have many characters like it's hard to keep track of who is who because they all kind of sound like the same person. Not so with her. I think she does a great job with that. The second book that I want to get to is The Sanatorium. Now Sarah Pierce is a new author for me. I know she also has a book called The Retreat and, and maybe some others. This is the only one I own from her. It does look like it was part of Reese Witherspoon's book club. I have seen mixed reviews on this, but there are some people that I follow over on Instagram who I really, really value their opinion on books. I trust them and we have very similar reading styles. And there's been about two or three people who have enjoyed it despite the mixed reviews. So I'm really hoping that I like this one. The third book is on my Kindle and that is The Dark by Emma Houghton. This has been on my Kindle for over a year and I need to get to it. I also do not own anything by Emma Houghton. And what's interesting is for the longest time, I never saw this discussed anywhere. And then probably in November, I came up with this idea that I wanted to do this reading vlog and I wanted it to coincide with my Mexico vacation. And then around Thanksgiving, I started seeing this pop up. People posting about it on Instagram, like in their book hauls, even full independent reviews on YouTube for this book. I just think it's so funny because I think this came out maybe like September 2021. Um, and I never saw anything until I was like, yeah, I'm gonna make an effort to get to this book. So it's just, it's funny, like serendipity, how things work sometimes. All right, now my plan, like I said, is to read these three. I will not be able to complete all three on my week vacation. Um, we do have a good amount of downtime sitting on the beach planned, but we also have some active days where we'll be scuba diving and then there's a day we're gonna do some deep sea fishing, but on the plane for sure and sitting on the beach, I'll get to them. However, this reading vlog is probably going to span the whole month of January. Now, there are a few categories that I am going to rate these books in, uh, on these individual categories and then overall rate the books and I want to compare them to each other. So when I am looking for a thriller, particularly a thriller that's like an isolated setting, that's a closed cast of characters, that's sort of like a whodunit, Agatha Christie style, there are some very specific characteristics that I personally look for to determine if I liked the book and as I'm reading along sort of form my thoughts and opinions based on those. So I have four different categories that I will be rating and reviewing these books based on. Number one is atmosphere. Now some of this has already been pre-selected in these in individual books that I've chosen and that would be snowy and isolated. Hopefully there's not going to be any type of atmosphere that would take place in the tropics, considering these are all books that particularly take place in snowy areas. But I do want to try and understand and, and critically think about, well, how did they describe the snowy conditions? Um, do they just say it's cold, wet and snowy or are there more descriptors? How does the isolation factor in the storms coming in that cause the isolation, how does that play into the plot? How does it change how the characters are interacting um, throughout the book with each other and with the scenery around them and the events occurring around them? For example, there's an avalanche that happens in one. So how would that change how you would 
act or react to a scenario you find yourself in, that feeling of claustrophobia, of being stuck. So I really want to kind of think through the three books based on that. Also, this next category, I'm not quite sure how to label it. It's more of a feeling. So I'm just going to call it the whodunit factor. So these are all books that where someone has died and we're trying to figure out who it is and what happened and there's a cast of characters. So I think one by one is the best example of this. However, I want to see how the other two do it because it is sort of taking inspiration from Agatha Christie and then there were none where it's and almost like the game Clue, right? Where like one by one people are falling down dead and you're trying to figure out who is it? I really want to see how these three books play through that, um, how they explain the next person has died. What was their manner of death? Where were they found? Who found them? And then as you're reading through the book, you know, does your opinion change of who the killer might be or what the motive might be or why this particular person was chosen? Some books obviously do a better job explaining that than others. I want to try and rate all three based on that. Third category, this is pretty obvious, the twist. These are thrillers. There should be at least one main twist. And if I know Ruth Ware, there will be multiple like smaller twists or twists within a twist. Um, I don't know about the other two because I haven't read those authors, but I would assume there's going to be at least one major plot twist. How they arrive there, how they pull it off, if there are any plot holes, how believable it is. Those are the types of factors I will be rating them on. And four would be the main character. In each of theirs, these books, there is obviously going to be a main character or, or maybe two or three main characters and their points of view. And I want to see how well these authors do of explaining these characters' um, mindset as they're going through these scary scenarios and trying to survive. Um, how, what is what is motivating their decision making or how are they going about making decisions sort of um, do they just fly off the cuff and do whatever they think feels best or are they analytical? Those are my four categories. I'm going to probably start reading one by one just because I think that is the shortest of the books. Sanatorium is almost up to 400 pages um, and I think The Dark is also about 350 maybe a 400. So one by one we are following it's actually a corporate retreat this company pretty swanky they have rented out a chalet in the French Alps it says a rustic ski chalet high in the French Alps and they even have their own private chef and you know it's like a retreat they're trying to bond blah 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 whatever okay my company doesn't do anything that nice uh however there is a avalanche that occurs there's eight co-workers the avalanche occurs and then they find out that someone has died each of the eight co-workers has something to gain something to lose and something to hide so I think you're probably going to go through all eight people and at different points in the book think that it's a different person responsible so the sanatorium this is taking place in you know this building it used to be a medical sanatorium this is up in the Swiss Alps not the French Alps like one by one and there is a storm that is coming in and someone has gone missing. We are following Ellen, who is our main character, and she is trying to figure out um, what happened to this woman that went missing, where could she be? And she's sort of under pressure racing against the clock because there is a storm coming in. And then as more and more people start realizing that someone went missing and they, there might be a killer in the hotel with them, sort of panic ensues and all hell starts breaking loose. So the dark, we are following a emergency room doctor who is from the UK and she has been um, asked to come down to Antarctica and to be the physician staffing this research station. Now there previously was a physician, but he has turned up dead. We don't know why, just the fact that he's turned up dead. And despite this, she's willing to take the job. She probably has some sort of backstory of why she needs to get the hell out of town like most thrillers do. And she is trying to figure out what happened to this prior physician. Is she at risk? Did he just sort of come across, did he just succumb to frostbite out there in the cold and the dark on the ice? Did someone have it in for him? So I've never read a book that took place in Antarctica. I hate being cold. It's kind of my worst freaking fear to be down there stuck on the ice where it's dark all the time. We'll see how it goes. So I will start reading one by one and I will do a check-in and let you guys know how far I've gotten. 
Hey y'all, this is my first check-in for One by One by Ruth Ware. I read about 100 pages um, last night. It was New Year's Eve and we stay home. We're mid-30s and old now. But I uh, just tried to stay up until midnight by reading the book, so I got a good amount in. As expected, it's a Ruth Ware book, so I am enjoying it. What's unique about this book uh, is that it's this tech company and they are on a corporate retreat. And this tech company is called Snoop. I kind of wish something like this existed in real life. So it is sort of like an app. Well, it is an app, but it's in addition to like your Spotify account. And anyone in the world can be listening to music and it will show what they're listening to on this app. So if you're logged into Snoop, you could go find someone in the book, it says Beyonce. So like you could find Beyonce and you could see what she's listening to and listen to the exact same song at the exact same time as her. And that's just, that's the whole app. That's all it is. So at the beginning of the book, Ruth Ware actually lays out the different executive officers of this Snoop company, their names, and you start to learn a little bit about them. It's like their bio from the website of the company. And they arrive at the chateau up in the French Alps uh, for a ski retreat, corporate retreat. And there is a young woman named Erin who is the house uh, host person. And then there's a chef. And Erin is one of the narrators. And so as this group is arriving, she is trying to place uh, names to faces and then also to their room numbers in the house. And so she's making a mental note of distinguishing characteristics of each of these characters in the book. So it's really helpful for you to be able to keep them straight because as the book goes on and we try to figure out like who the killer is going to be, it's going to be important to be able to keep people straight. There are about four main characters in addition to Aaron, and those it's very easy to figure out who they are to distinguish from each other. Um, Ruth Ray does a great job of that. And then the other like four or five characters, well, four are kind of like in the background, um, kind of like filler characters, at least right now. So I don't know if it will continue that way, but so far they're not really central to the story. So it's not bothering me. There are two narrators. There's Aaron, the host, and this young woman named Liz, who is affiliated with the company, and they go back and forth. And then at the beginning of each chapter, it shows you like their Snoop username and if they're listening to anybody. So it's just interesting to see like, are they listening in on the other people in the company? Uh, they have very different voices from each other, so it's also easy to keep them straight. I also think that Ruth Ware does a fantastic job of describing the setting, the scenery, the isolation. So they are staying at the chalet at the top of a mountain, like on a ski resort. And the only way to get there is to take a funicular. So like a one of those like motorized lifts up to it. Um, and there is a pending storm coming in or it keeps mentioning that the weather has not been great lately. And there's been a lot of snow and like from like page one, it's talking about that. So it's really setting up this snowy, isolated theme that I've been looking for. I thought it was really interesting that she goes into detail about avalanche control. Well, not she, but one of the narrators, Erin, is discussing to this group at the chalet avalanche control and the different color flags and like green, yellow, orange, red system marking for the risk of avalanche. And that sometimes uh, ski resorts will set off controlled explosions to get some of the snow up off of the mountaintops in a controlled manner before it becomes a full-on avalanche. Uh, I'm not a skier, so I have learned a lot about skiing and ski resorts in general, and I didn't know what off-piste meant, which I guess means like you make your own ski trail, you go off the route. That was cool. This is a tech startup company, and they are talking about like um, rounds of funding and whether to go public and all that. So obviously I think the motives are going to come down to money and she does a great, Ruth Ware does a great job from the beginning setting up the characters and what possible motives might be. So as you're trying to figure out who the killer is. Now I think the obvious answer is that the motive is going to be um, voting share control over the company and money related to the voting control. Um, but that's the obvious answer. So I'm sort of thinking maybe that's not going to be the motive or the or the killer wouldn't be involved with that because that's very obvious. And she normally doesn't make it the obvious answer. And then some of the descriptions of these people are just such obvious like tech bros. Like if you've ever known anyone who worked in startup or like especially tech company startup culture. Oh my God, they're so, 
they all have like the same frat boy personality mentality and anyways she, i've known a few and she is spot on with these characters so i'll see how much more i can get done today but so far i'm really liking it so in the meantime i have to start packing for our mexico trip sorry my dog is eating his breakfast over there um and we're only going for like six days and i just I'm a terrible overpacker. I actually have like a whole stack of bathing suits in here. Um, you'll see once I get them in the suitcase. We're only going to be there Saturday, Saturday through Friday. So tell me why I need 15 bathing suits. Well, because I can't make up my fucking mind. And I think they all look terrible. So I got my colorful ones. That's makeup. Don't mind that. And then over here, I've got the black ones. So I think it's like fucking 15 total for a five day trip. Whatever. So I they're really cute. My husband bought these. Like, doesn't that one look super, like, appropriate for a Mexican holiday at the beach? Hey, so I'm doing my final check-in for one by one. Today is January 3rd. I finished it yesterday in the morning. So I read this in about a course of a day. So I know that if I read a Ruth Ware book, it's going to be good. I always enjoy them. I usually give them four stars, except for the turn of the key, I gave five. Now I will say if you're used to reading really dark thrillers that sometimes they almost are on the verge of horror, she does not write like that. These are straight up just thriller mystery type books. So for that, like they never actually scare me. They don't make me feel anxious like some other thrillers do, but they are solidly written books. I usually don't see that there's any plot holes. The character development is really great. The setting is well done. The general story and the twists are well done. So that's exactly how this was. In the end, I'm giving it four stars. Where I left off was the last little like 50 or so pages is the showdown between two characters, the killer and another character. And this other person decides they're not going to be a victim. And they are thinking quickly on their feet, trying to be analytical and rational about, okay, what's the best way out of this scenario? And despite being hurt, they get on a pair of skis and they try to make it down into town. But by going off piste, meaning like off the set ski run I, I don't ski what do you call it? a path a trail uh, and it's very dangerous and kind of it's very sharp and goes down between two uh, cliffs so you're in a very very tight um, path with lots of boulders and zigging and zagging again I, I don't ski there are a lot of terms during that scene at the I actually had to look up and it was cool because I learned more about skiing but if you're not a skier there's just some technical terms you might need to look up and some words in French you might need to look up. So that scene was a little bit, again, not anxious, but thrilling, right? Where the killer is chasing this person and getting closer and closer. And it's a very hard ski. And it, it's like a double black diamond, basically. And the the victim is falling and or the potential victim is falling. The killer is falling and the killer's chasing them down the mountain. Oh. And my dog is barking. And then there's a scene where uh, a splat. <laughs> if you read the book, you know what I'm talking about. And that was described so gruesomely. I was like, oh, I could just see it in my mind. Like, oh, it's gross. And then having to sit next to that all night. <laughs> um, the ending was good. There was a nice little wrap up. Um, another sort of twist uh, in the last few chapters there about um, something now coming to light from people's past. I can't tell you what, obviously, but I like that part that was wrapped up well. So again, going back to my criteria, atmosphere, great, loved it, learned a lot about avalanches, learned a lot about skiing, the winter, the uh, the isolation in the chalet, and the description of like, what are they called? The things you take to go up to the mountain and the way it works, it was great. The main characters, there were two, and one was pretty meek, but that is the point to drive the story forward. The other main character, like I said, analytical, rational, making good decisions. This is like a strong female character. I hate characters where it's like, oh, damsel in distress. So that was great. The whodunit factor, she definitely had me guessing from chapter to chapter, sometimes within the same chapter, paragraph to paragraph. Well, no, that person has a motive. Well, now that you mention it, this other person would have a strong motive and they have been acting kind of funny. This person over here is sus. I really enjoyed that. I think she did a great job. And again, I didn't see any plot holes. The twist. Now I will say, 
I'm not very good at guessing, but I was like, you know what? I don't think it would be this person because that's almost too obvious. So why would she have it be the obvious answer? But I think she's throwing you off just enough that you're like, no, it wouldn't be that. There's enough reason to think someone else. And then I was sort of wrong. I, I don't want to lead any clues if you're going to read the book. So I was sort of wrong there. But I was like, okay, that was really great. I think she did a great job. It was pulled off, executed well. However, in the end, there just wasn't like an oomph factor, like that extra level to, or I don't even know what you would call it, like that extra ingredient that would push this over the edge into a five star. So four star, certainly strong. But like I mentioned, that's usually where I place Ruth Ware's books. Um, Jennifer McMahon's five star across the board. That always has that oomph factor. So very strong read, especially if you're trying to get a whodunit snowy isolated read for this time of year. We'll see how it stacks up against the sanatorium and the dark. Hey, so it is now Friday, January 6th. I actually have not read any of the other two books for this vlog. I'm going to start today. I was sort of ripping through books really, really quickly. It's a pretty down, like easy week at work this week. So I've been listening to audiobooks and then I was also having some insomnia. So I picked some books I could get through pretty quickly and was reading those on my Kindle at night. So I read those uh, until I was ready to start back up with the vlog books. So I'm going to start today, The Dark by Emma Houghton. This is the one that takes place in Antarctica at a research station uh, because that's on my Kindle. And then I've got a hardback copy of The Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce. Uh, I will read that at the beach. Um, I just felt like I didn't want to bring my iPad to the beach <laughs> for a Kindle book. I probably won't check in again until I am on my way to Mexico or sitting my butt on the beach in Mexico with a margarita. So see you soon. Cancun. This is my first check-in. Um, I'm currently reading the sanatorium. So really enjoying it. I'm about 80 pages in. It right off the bat is really great at setting the scene, the mystery, the snowiness, the isolation. I really love the way she describes this prior sanatorium now hotel. And you definitely get the feeling that it's just really freaking creepy. Even though it's been renovated and redone by these world famous architects, this architect firm. It's just really freaking for me to stay there. The wind was really bad, so I came in. So anyways, about 80 pages in, really enjoying the setting so far. Um, I'm at the point where someone has gone missing, or maybe not, because it's really early on, and even the police don't want to say this is a missing person yet. So I don't really know about like the whodunit factor yet, or the twists and turns. As far as our main character, Ellen, I don't know. That's kind of so far the one drawback. I feel like the writing is a little bit hokey or like just laying out a little bit too thick. It's like, yeah, we get it. Something happened to her in her past and now she has panic attacks and she can't handle it. That's not the problem. It's just the way the writing is done. It's just coming across really, really strong. Like every other page is talking about it. It's like, okay, I get it. And then she's meeting up with her brother who she hasn't seen in years. And apparently there's another brother who is no longer in the picture. And she keeps just making references to her brother and the way he used to act as a child. Now these people are now about 30. I don't know about you, but like, I don't remember shit like that about my siblings when they were little like little mannerisms or like the way their face would change when they they were trying to hide something from you it's it's quite often she's mentioning that and then even um hold on there's a page where it says so she looks over at the bed and she says um he slept like that as a child they both had like the bed was unable to contain their energy I don't like remember the way my brother slept in his bed as a child. It, that's the part that's a little bit unbelievable. And so I'm just not really liking the character. Hopefully that stops. We'll see. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go read this on the beach today and I will check in a little bit later. And in the meantime, my margarita. <laughs>
right, checking in on the sanatorium. I am now about two thirds of the way through. There has been an avalanche. They, there's a storm coming in. They are shut off in this hotel way up on a mountain. There's like a glacier above it. And then they keep mentioning how this area is at extra risk for avalanches. So people are already starting to feel um, vulnerable, a little bit scared. And then dun, 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 someone turns up dead. Um, so we're starting to get into the whole like who done it part in our main character Ellen. So she was a detective in the UK. The police in Switzerland cannot get up there. So it's kind of interesting. She like gets a hold of the um, local police in the um, <clears throat> I guess what we would call like the prosecutor's office or like district attorney here in the US and they're walking her through like Swiss protocols so that she can help collect evidence and stuff because the crime scene is like rapidly deteriorating. <clears throat> there was a bit of a twist um, that I was like expecting that to happen, um, although we're not quite sure like if what they're saying about that person is true, so we'll see. It's still doing sort of the annoying part where she keeps thinking about her childhood and just remembering very small details and like that's not how it works. Like human brains, like as we get older, we naturally forget, oh, sorry forget more and more of our childhood and like there's just no way she would constantly remember all these little things that's just a little bit annoying um and the author is starting to give us reasons to be thinking about each individual character um how they may or may not be responsible although there is one person that she hasn't really touched on and it's who i think might be responsible for this um there are some really scary scenes where um, the unnamed unknown perpetrator is wearing this really crazy mask. It, it's almost described as like a gas mask and just the way she describes the sounds like the <laughs> almost like the Bane mask. If you've ever seen um, that Batman movie with Bane, that is kind of freaky. Um, so we will see the main character is still kind of annoying. She's meant to be, um, but hopefully she can like I don't know stop being such a wuss <laughs> we'll see um i also did start the dark this morning i was watching the sunrise so put some little clips here i was watching the sunrise and um starting to read the dark that book the atmosphere right away from page one she's flying into antarctica and it's describing just like the vast white blankness and the sun reflecting off the snow how blinding it is and how cold and it's really cool because I think that the author must have done a lot of scientific research about Antarctica because just the way how she explains about they're technically where this substation is at, the scientific station, they're technically in a desert and that there is no rain, there is no snowfall really. So when they do get it, it just sort of compresses down and there's these ice and snow layers that are thousands and thousands of years old. That was really cool. I googled it and it's actually true. He's make making scientific little details like sprinkling them in and in the first few chapters um kate the doctor she's really just getting oriented to the scientific station and the different pods and the buildings and how the water recycling works and how the power works and that's really interesting to learn about and i, I did some googling and from what i can tell it's true um so i think she did a lot of good research there but i'm only five chapters in so it's too early to say much about like twists or the main character of the whodunit although the main character does have a past it keeps making mention of she's got this scar on her face she was in an accident and she's like starting over like a clean slate but she has to keep popping pills for her anxiety and she's supposed to be there for a year i mean you can imagine how isolated you are at the south pole <laughs> um and there's going to be like six months of just complete darkness so we will check in later today. Me and my family are going scuba diving and I'm hoping to see some turtles. So I'll check in later. I'm hoping to finish the sanatorium soon and make some decent progress on the dark.
I'm feeling a little hungover <laughs> this morning. We went scuba diving yesterday and then we went out and had a big dinner and lots of cocktails and oh boy. But anyways, this morning I was sitting on her balcony and I've been reading more of the dark. Um, I am really enjoying this. This author is doing a fantastic job, particularly of like sprinkling in little tidbits here and there. So with, you know, a thriller, there are little clues usually along the way. And um, when you start trying to figure out who the killer or the perpetrator is, you start thinking back to all those little clues. And it's like, is that throwing you off? Is it a red herring or whatnot? This author is doing a fantastic job of just kind of sprinkling them in here and there without being too heavy handed. Also, the feeling of like isolation is, she, oh, chef's kiss, phenomenal. Let me read you a few little clips. So they are <clears throat> at the South Pole, or well, maybe not quite South Pole, but they're in Antarctica at a research station and it's about to be winter and the last plane is coming in to pick people up and drop off supplies, but she's with the winter crew that's gonna be there. So they're not gonna see another plane for months and months. <clears throat> so let me go to this. Once that plane takes off again, I'm here to stay. No way to leave the base for another eight months. That's scary. <laughs> that would give me a panic attack. And then the way that she just describes um, the snow in the winter is just so good. So here's another example. They're outside doing snow samples um, for climate change science experiments. Um, <clears throat> I pull on my thick outer gloves and step outside, listening to the faint tinkling sound as the vapor in my breath freezes and falls to the ground like powdered glass. My fingers and toes throb painfully as we trudge back to Alpha Station, but that's preferable to numbness. It's when you can't feel anything at all that you need to worry. Um, so she has started to figure out more about what happened, um, the details surrounding the death of the prior doctor, um, it's really, really heartbreaking what happened to him. And if you know anything about um, austere environments or like, you know, mountaineering, Mount Everest, things like that, if someone is hurt or dies, then they're usually left there. Like there's a lot of bodies <laughs> uh, on Mount Everest and other really austere environments, especially cold. So imagine if someone does die in Antarctica, um, particularly in an isolated scenario like that, um, you're probably, the body's probably not coming back. So it was just really sad reading about that. So I'm about 25% of the way through. Um, I'm gonna be going down to the beach. I'm gonna switch over to the sanatorium in a little bit just because it's really hard to read the Kindle at the beach. So far, I am preferring um, the dark to the sanatorium, particularly the main character in the dark. The doctor's name is Kate and she just seems a little bit more tough than Ellen, who is the detective in the sanatorium. Um, so we'll kind of see at the end of this which one I prefer. I do like that in all three books, the main characters are women though. So we'll, at the end, we'll compare and contrast and see who I prefer. <laughs> So this morning at the beach, I got about over 100 pages done on the sanatorium. I'm on page 320. There's maybe 50, 60 pages left to go. So the investigation is picking up and I do like that part where Ellen is trying to chase down leads to figure out like, what is this killer's signature move? What does that mean? There seems to be a medical component tied to the history of the hotel that it was a sanatorium. And there are like patient ID numbers that are involved and redacted medical records. So don't want to go into too much detail if you haven't read the book, but that part of her trying to track down the details around the medical um, signature moves of this killer, that was really interesting. But I just got to the part where they reveal who the killer is. And I find it very different in that they reveal who the killer is. There's a skirmish, the killer takes off. And then from that point, there's about 80 pages left in the book. I'm used to thrillers where there's like this big climactic scene and the killer is revealed 
towards the end. So it's interesting that the person's gone. So I don't know what the rest of the book is going to entail. I don't really understand why that person did it. They didn't go into too much detail. There was like one line about what their motive might have been, but then nothing else. I don't know. I didn't really agree with that. <laughs> Seemed kind of a letdown. So I don't know if there's another killer or what, or more details going to come about, but so far that was a letdown. Then there was a twist regarding Ellen and like some major event from her childhood and turns out that she had it completely wrong and he I just don't understand how she's now in her 30s and so over 20 years have gone by since this traumatic event and no one ever told her like apparently she completely forgot and thought something else happened regarding someone who had died it's just very odd like 20 plus years went by and your family never actually talked to you about what happened I don't know very unbelievable I was making a face like <laughs> and my mother-in-law was sitting next to me she's like what's going on over there I said I'm just not not digging this part of the book so I'm um, hoping to finish it this afternoon and then this evening I'll get back to the dark While I'm sitting on the beach today, I don't know. It had me and then it lost me, and then it had me and then it lost me. In the end, there are multiple people involved. Um, and so if you've read the book, you know that there are two different motives, let's say. I think the book only scratched the surface on both of those. I think she really needed to lean in and provide more detail about whether it was the personal motive of the one person or the historical like generational trauma motive of the other person. I think I could have done more to discuss the broader theme of abuse, abuse of power, of patients, patients who are mentally ill, that sort of a thing. And I thought that's where the book was going to go, but it was just like a snippet and then we moved on. I think that would have made the book a lot stronger. I think the last big scene where Aaron the detective is confronting the killer and the killer is just continuing to blab and blab and blab and like why they did everything completely unrealistic and it went on and on and on just unrealistic um and it was just kind of a mess like the last few chapters it don't I don't think it really pulled everything together everything was just jumbled together I feel like the author was trying to fit too much stuff too many perpetrators too many motives too many backstories too many relationships it was just very very jumbled and the end didn't work quite well for me so i think i mean it was decent enough i would give it three stars i don't know that i would read anything else i think this is supposed to be the beginning of a series the who died factor was decent i feel like the author did at least for me personally do a good job of keeping me guessing and thinking who it might have been and then throwing us off where it being more than one person that was good the main character, she annoyed the shit out of me, and also it really did shine with the snowy, isolated, atmospheric feeling of being stuck up there, and multiple avalanches happening, and the police not being able to get to you in time, and a killer on the loose. Um, but the general plot, the twist, the themes, that's really where it fell down. And it needed to cut out a lot of shit and then add more substance as far as the motives, like I discussed. But in the end, Three stars, it was enjoyable.
right, I am sad to say that I am home from Cancun. I did finish all three books where we left off. I had finished the sanatorium and I was about halfway through the dark, I think maybe 40%. So here's how it went. Um, the dark. So this is a thriller that is taking place uh, in Antarctica or on Antarctica in a research station that's been put together by the UN. So it's got people from all over the world. And there is a mystery that the doctor, Kate, is trying to solve. And there have now been multiple people that have died. And there was a part, maybe 70%, 75% of the way through the book, where my jaw just dropped, just thinking about, this is my worst nightmare. So there are going to be a few little spoilery bits. Um, the only way I can really give my full thoughts is to do that. Uh, okay, so there is a point in the book where someone has sabotaged their generators. Obviously, there's no power lines in Antarctica. So the only way that you would get heat, electric, water would be if you had generators. And both the main generator and the backup generator have been tampered with. We find out that there is a pistol that is locked up. Who knows why, but there is a pistol on the station that's been locked up. Um, and the keys have been taken out of the station leader's office. The pistol is gone. The satellite phone is gone. And basically, there's no means of communication. There's no heat. There's no power. They can't um, use their water system. The pipes are frozen. So not only are they dealing with this emergency of being in Antarctica without heat and electricity, um, there is still a killer on the loose and Kate does not know who it is. It could potentially be like one of six or seven people. There's a medical emergency going on that she's also having to deal with. And uh, it's really like, this is the most high stakes thriller I've ever read because not only you're dealing with a killer on the loose and you don't know who it is, but the fact that like, what's gonna kill you first? Is it gonna be this killer on the station or is it going to be the inhospitable environment of Antarctica? So they're just, they're racing against the clock because there's no way to communicate to the UN or to anybody. They're nowhere near any of the other research stations in Antarctica, like there's McMurdo, which is the American station and a few others that were mentioned, I forget which. Um, so no way to communicate. Even the backup generator is messed up. They don't know if they have the parts to fix it. There's someone's got a pistol um, and it's rapidly getting colder and colder. And there are now multiple people actually having medical emergencies in the station. And that is just, that's an extra layer of fear and complexity that I haven't read in other books. So anyways, that would be my, just my worst nightmare. I hate being cold. I can't think of anything worse than that. That's the part I was reading on the plane and I guess I must have looked tense or I don't know if I was like jittery because my husband looked over to me on point. He's like, are you okay? <laughs> Anyways, some other things I really liked about the book, a lot of scientific facts were included. You know, it's a science research station and it's very clear that the author did a lot of research as even in her author's note and acknowledgements at the end, it includes like who she spoke with and that came across very clearly in the book. I enjoyed learning about, um, I had previously mentioned a little factoid about like the snow and ice layers. I thought it was really cool where she included information about how planes work or don't work in really, really cold temperatures like in Antarctica and what they would have to worry about and why it is that it would be almost impossible to get a plane out to these people in winter. That was interesting. Some parts that I felt were really accurate because I am a medical professional. Um, there are some scenes where there is a surgery and some other medical interventions that occur and those were very accurate. Um, obviously a bit of a stretch given the situation they were in, but um, otherwise very accurate. And she talks in multiple parts of the book about the effects of hypothermia and like the physiological changes our bodies go through during hypothermia. Those were accurate. When it came to the twist, it did involve other bases and like people from other bases, events from other bases, like the American base, the Australian base. Really enjoyed that. I thought that was creative to kind of have it bleed out beyond just the set cast of characters at the UN scientific research base. Um, <laughs> the whodunit factor, uh, it definitely kept me 
guessing um, throughout various parts of the book, you're led to believe that it's for sure this one person. And then a few chapters later, you get another tidbit of information. And now you've changed your mind. And it's for sure someone else. Some people, there's never any little tidbits. And so then you're left wondering, like, did she leave that person out? Is that going to be the twist? We never saw it coming. So I really thought that was done well. Uh, especially how the main character, Kate, um, she is trying to figure out who who did it. And she's looking through people's video diaries that they've recorded throughout their time on base. She finds an actual diary of somebody and based on clues from there, because it just has initials, doesn't have full names, she's trying to piece together and even she keeps changing her mind about who it must be. Speaking of the main character, I really enjoyed how strong Kate was. There were a few things that kind of got on my nerves I was like oh my god suck it up already like you're in a life or death situation everyone else like you you have you have no choice but to be strong or you're never getting off of Antarctica but for the most part I really enjoyed her character I thought she was really well developed she really grew a lot um, emotionally mentally etc throughout the course of the book the only thing I'm taking away like half a point because at the very end when it's the big climax reveal the twist and then it's almost like boom we're done and next thing we know it's the very last page and I'm not going to tell you how it ends but there, it's wrapped up very well there's there's an ending but it was just too abrupt obviously the big climax the twist is always going to come at the end of the book near the ending but this was it was just too abrupt it, that needed to be smoothed out that transition so half a point off so in the end this book is four and a half stars for me I've really really enjoyed this it's not I've never seen it talked about really. Um, not on YouTube, not on Instagram, not on TikTok. Obviously, if you go to Goodreads, there are some reviews, but that's really the only place I've seen it. I think it's definitely under hyped. It's a fantastic snowy, cold weather, isolated thriller, if that's what you're looking for. Okay, so let's compare all three books. Which ones did I think were the best overall? And then it's and then breaking it down for the four categories. So in the end, I gave one by one four stars. And then I gave the sanatorium three stars and the dark four and a half stars. So overall, I enjoyed the dark the most. That's not to say the other two weren't enjoyable. It's just there were pieces about that book that really blew me away that really put it over the top as my favorite of this vlog. At the beginning, I had laid out four different categories that I wanted to analyze these books on. So that is the atmosphere, the whodunit factor, the twist and the main character. Overall, as far as atmosphere, I do think that the dark does that the best. I mean, just talking about the night sky and the aurora borealis, it's not the aurora borealis, that's the northern lights, whatever the word is for the southern lights, aurora something. Um, just the way that she's describing this icy bitterness, isolation, six months of darkness at a time, she describes a scene the last time they see the sun and it's setting and it's going down beyond the horizon and they know they're not going to see it for months. Just they're, These other two books, we're not going to be able to top that at all. However, I will say when we're talking about snowy situations, avalanches occur, right? So in, in One by One and the Sanatorium, there were avalanches. So as far as the atmosphere and the environment of avalanches, they didn't have it in the dark. But One by One really did that part much much better than the sanatorium describing the avalanche what it's like to be stuck in an avalanche um when it goes wrong and when you survive it what causes an avalanche what uh can be done up in the alps as far as mitigating that part if we're talking about avalanches it's one by one if it's overall atmosphere it's the dark for me and then when it comes to the whodunit factor also <laughs> the dark i just feel like it was the book that kept me guessing the most and new little twists about who it could have been and all the different ways that Kate had to try and piece together clues. You know, she was talking to people, asking them questions about their previous uh, expeditions on the ice and other bases they've been on. She's trying to look through video diaries, through other diaries, through personnel files. Like she's really trying to piece it all together with all different types of evidence and not just you know what she's seeing and by talking to people and being like, hey, is it you or do you know who's doing it? For me, the dark, the whodunit factor was just the most well thought out. 
When it comes to the twist, now this might surprise you considering I scored it the lowest. I'm gonna give this one to the sanatorium. It's not that I didn't see it coming. I just really liked that this was different than other thrillers and that more than one person was involved and it almost was like two timelines. So twists on two different timelines converging. There was a current day like need for revenge and that was leading to who the killer was and that was the twist. But then there was a historical revenge plot and revenge factor and how that relates to the treatment of women back in the day and how they would be shut up in insane asylums and lacking bodily autonomy and and sort of the terrible experiments that women had gone through and the medical abuse they had gone through and how that led to the present day revenge plot. So due to those factors, I'm giving the sanatorium the win on the twist. And then lastly, if we're talking about the main character, I'm going to give this to Erin from One by One. I felt that she was the strongest of the um, three different books protagonists. Now, each of the women had a traumatic past. Erin, Kate, and Ellen, they all had someone very close to them pass away in the past and, and the circumstances around that and their trauma are slowly revealed throughout the courses of the three books. Obviously, they're all flawed to to some degree or another. Like that's the typical thriller is that there is some flawed, unreliable female narrator. I did feel like Erin from One by One was the strongest that she um, was just like the least annoying in her decision making. You know, when you watch a horror movie and you're like yelling at the main character, you're like, don't do that. You're going to die. I didn't really have that mu that with her, whereas the other two, there were points in times so I found myself a little annoyed at them more so in the sanitarium than the dark. All right, so that is the end of this very long <laughs> reading vlog. I hope you liked uh, my thoughts on these three books. Uh, if you haven't read them before, I mean, I recommend all of them, just some were stronger than others for me. And I hope you enjoyed me taking you along on my family trip to Cancun. Uh, when I left Cancun on Friday, it was like 82 degrees. And when I got back home to North Carolina, it was just about freezing. So about a 50 degree swing. I'm not enjoying it. So that's all I have for you guys today. Um, I hope to see you in my next video. And if you're not already subscribed, I'd love to have you. You can hit that subscribe button so you are notified when I put out new videos. So thanks y'all. Have a good one.